Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. We need healing today. We need healing of our bodies. We need healing of our souls, Lord. I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, to heal them. God's not dead. He's still alive. I could feel them in my feet. We need healing. I could feel them in my hands. We need healing. I could feel them all over me. I could feel them in the morning. I could feel them in the noontime. I could feel them late at night. <laughs> How many people out there need a healer today? How many people out there need a touch from the Lord? Well, you got to say it. God's not dead. He, he's still alive. I can feel him in my feet. Who, how many people feet are hurt? How many people feet are hurt? I can feel him in my feet. He's in me. I'm breathing. I'm living. I'm moving because of him. I can feel him in my feet. How many people legs are not right? I feel him in my leg. Lord, I'm asking you to heal my feet. Heal my legs. Heal my hip, Lord. How many people hips are not right? Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to heal the hips, Lord. Heal the feet, the legs, Lord, the arms. Heal the minds. People need their mind healed more than ever. They need their mind healed more than ever before. So they know that God is God. And the devil's a lie. Everything the devil tells you, he's a lie. He's not true. God's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. I could feel him in my feet. I could feel him in my hands. I could feel him all over me. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I could feel him in my hands. I could feel him in my feet. I could feel him all over me. You got to say it. You got to say it. You got to believe it. You got to trust it. Lord, when I don't feel you in my feet, I need to say I could feel it in my feet. Heal me, Lord. I can feel it in my feet. Heal me, Lord. I can feel it in my legs. Heal me, Lord. I can feel it in my legs. Heal me, Lord. I can feel it all over me. Heal my, my body. Heal my mind, Lord. Jesus, show me the way. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Not the world's word, not the devil's word, not even the government word, but thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Test it. I want people to know in Matthew's the fifth chapter. Let's go to Matthew's the fifth chapter. Matthew's the fifth chapter. I'm going to start at the third verse. I want you to understand something. That when Adam and Eve started and Eve began to listen to the serpent. She didn't have to listen to the serpent. She didn't have to do what the serpent wanted her to do. My message today, don't listen to the deviations of the devil. My message today is don't listen to the deviations of the devil. Don't listen. Don't let he or don't adhere to the devil's word. You'll know when the devil's word is being echoed through the masses. You'll know. One of the number one things you should do before you go to church, before you listen to a preacher preach, is to get on your knees, you pray, and you read his word. How many people does that? Not too many people, but I urge you to do that. Just the same as so, that people, if they love their pastor, if they love their preacher, if they love the man of God, and they truly know that this man is anointed by God, that you, it would behoove me to try to understand why wouldn't they pay their tithes? I pay my tithes, some people pay their tithes, and some people don't pay their tithes. 
And you could go back to, you know, a man say, I'm your brother. You mean I got to sign a contract to be in your house? Aren't I'm your brother? Your brother should come in anytime he wants. And then the man responded, well, uh, Cain was Abel, brother. And look what Cain did to Abel. Cain was jealous of Abel. He hit Abel in the head. And Abel, he killed him. He killed Abel. Cain he killed Abel. The third verse. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed that the mourn, for they shall be comforted. The fifth verse. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The 10th verse, blessed are they that are prosecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to go back to the third verse in a moment. Let me, now, standard deviation is a form of math. That's the best example I'm going to use. It's a form of math. You have your numbers 1 through 10. And then if you divide 1 through 10, you have 5. 5 would be your medium. It's the center mass of the numbers. Okay. And then they, any, anything, in, is there a number in between 5 and 6, you would say? Yes, there is. The number between 5 and 6 would be 5.5, or 5.1, or 5.2, or 5.3. You, you don't hear me? So the 5.1, the 5.2, the 5.3, and the 5.5 is your standard deviation. It's deviating from the number. Now, when God said, that he made the earth in seven days. He finished what he had to do in seven days, whether it was six or seven days. There's a number. There was no deviation into what God was doing. When God said, let there be light, there was a light. The light didn't say, well, I don't know what light is. The light didn't say, I never found light before. I could not know what it is because I never heard it before. But when God said, let it be light, it was light. When God said, the, in, the, in the midst of the darkness, there should be stars, and there should be water, and there should be clouds, and all. When he pronounced all those things, it was. Now, we, if we let go and listen to God, we're all right. But this world is living in a place, a pause, if you would. They're living in a place of Standard deviation. They're living in a place of stagnated. They live in a place of confusion. They don't know which way to go. They don't know whether to go to the left or whether to go to the right. Now let me tell you something. A man who is married to a woman, and he is truly under God's legion, and he have his house rules and and, and, and he's telling everybody to follow his house rules, and, and some people in the house don't want to follow it. They have people argue, well, I don't need to tell you everywhere I go or everything I do. I'm not a child. But God said that we are not our own, that we're bought with a price. God said that you should wait on him. You should wait on him and wait for an answer from God. I'm talking about the male. The male should wait on God and listen what God said. If he have a spirit in him, he'll know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Do you know why when men go off to war, they can't take their wives or their children with them? The reason for that is because that they'd be spending the whole time trying to protect their wife and their children. They wouldn't be concentrating on protecting themselves. They wouldn't concentrate on that. They wouldn't be concentrating on trying to kill an enemy who's trying to destroy. Now, why do we go to war? Most, For the most part, we go to war with the world because the world is not right. They're not living right. They're doing what they want to do. They don't have no conscience of living right for God. They don't have no freedoms, if you would. They have, some people, countries have a dictatorship. 
That means everything you do or say is going to be dictated or predicated on what their rules are or what, what, what they can say. Now, a dictatorship could be good or bad. When you have a child growing up, you don't let them make decisions. They're too young. You make all the decisions for them. And then when they get of an age, of a rightful age, they'll know what to do, how to do it, because they have learned through all those years to make a right decision. But the world is not doing that. The world is stuck on, well, I'm going to let the child make the decision. And the reason why they're letting the child make the decision is because parents in long ago have, uh, have taken the tool of abusing the kids and doing them wrong. What do you mean by abusing them? Some parents have put the children in the back of the car, put them in seatbelts, and let the car ride in the ocean. Some parents, they're whipping their kids and they're almost destroying them in front of TV cameras at the grocery store. And when that happened, the government starts saying that they're going to put their mind in it. They're going to put their sense in it. Because the parent uh, beat the child so bad, the parent, uh, it looked like he wasn't doing it. So they wanted to make a law that if parents do this, that parents could get in trouble for doing it. Now, when they saw the parent do what the parent did, what they should have did right away, they should have go, go ahead and do what they need to do. Arrest the parent, have the parent through, go through counseling and whatnot. The world is blind. They see one situation and they predicate it on everybody. Let every case has its own merit. Let every person be just thus so. Everybody is not the same. And everybody don't do the same thing. So you're going to be judged and you're going to be predicated on what you do. But the world, they couldn't find a, 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 a better way, another way. They say anytime we get a case where parents are abusing the child, we're going to arrest them. And during that time, they were arresting everybody. Everybody was going to jail. Child would, 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 would call the police and, and they, regular discipline. Children had regular discipline. Now in today's time, you can't even discipline your child the way you want. The Bible says, Spare not the ride. The world say don't whip your children. Put them in time out. The Bible say that if we spoil a child, you know, if we spare the ride, we spoil a child. What that mean? Now you have children talking back to you. You have children acting crazy on you because you didn't discipline them. You didn't do what God said to. But you see, the devil, he has standard deviation on you. He don't want you to do what God said to. He wants you to do the opposite. He wants you to put the 5.5 in or the 5.3. But God said put the 5 in. You don't need no 5.3. You don't need no 5.5. Put the 5 in. But we don't want to put the 5 in. We want to put the 5.5. If a parent beat the child, we need to arrest her. Whether she wrong, right, or in between, arrest her. Put her in jail. And then some parents go as far as saying that, well, if He's not going to listen to me. And if you want to tell me what to do with my child, I tell you what, I give to you. You could do it. I'm not going to no jail for my child. You lost your mind. Either he's going to listen, his behind going to get whipped, and he's going to do what thus said the Lord, or he got to get out. he got to get out. you got to take a firm stand. You see, the thing that Eve messed up on, she listened to what the serpent said. You see, the Eve listened to the standard deviation the devil had. The, the, the God said, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. But the devil said, that woman, you can have your husband, you can have your neighbor's husband, and you can have the husband on your job. And then the devil's telling the man that you can have your wife, uh, you can have uh, Sister Sue in church, uh, you can have the teacher that teach your kid. You can have all of them. That's the standard deviation of the devil. The devil's telling you you can have all that stuff. And, and God said no. And well, the God, well, the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. He died. He took on sin for us. So all we have to do is yield to him. He said one woman. He said one man. He did not save many. And then we pronounce it. Uh, we pronounce this man and woman married. Uh, we pronounce this man and woman married. Do you, beloved, do you, Karen, take Jake to be your husband? And Karen would say, 
Yes, I'm taking Jake to be my husband. And, and Jake, would you take Karen, uh, you know, him, uh, to be uh, your wife? And, and then Jake said, yes, <laughs> I take Karen uh, to be my wife. And then Jake uh, uh, go to his uh, ring bearer. Uh, Jake take the ring and Jake put the ring and he, he, he put the ring up uh, to the pastor. The pastor say, okay, Jake, you take that ring, you put that ring on your bride. And then Jake take that ring, he put that ring on his bride and he said, repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, with this ring, with this ring, it said with this ring that I married Karen. It didn't say with this ring I married uh, Karen's sister, her cousin, or Willamine. It didn't say that. With this ring I do wear. I do wear. Who I do wear? Well, I do wear with Karen. Not her cousin, not her sister, not her best friend. With Karen, and that's it. That ring, once it was placed on that finger, become a, a 360. That ring is certified a covenant between a man and a woman. That they are not married. That they're together. They become as one flesh. People don't believe in that one flesh. The wife don't trust the husband. The husband don't trust the wife. They got separate accounts. They can't trust each other with money. They don't come to each other for problems. The woman never come to her husband with problems. She do what she want, when she want, how she want. If it wasn't for God and his grace and mercy, back in the day, those people were stoned. You don't understand what I'm saying. Back in the day before Jesus came and told a lady that he told the people as they were about to stone her, for the sin that she committed, the fornication she committed. He said, if any of you, without sin, cast the first stone. That's what Jesus told them. None of them couldn't do it because all of them had sin. You don't understand. So, you can't have one without the other. You can't say, well, I don't want... You hear me? The Old Testament, uh, in the Old Testament, they had many wives. You don't know where you're going. If you live in... In the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ can't show his grace and mercy. If you're living in disobedience, he can't do what he needs to do with you. If you're in a mad church and you're not supporting him, why in the world you come? You're not supporting that man. You are a more of a hindrance than you are in hell. you got to get on your knees. you got to pray and you got to ask the Lord, what church I need to be in? Because this church, I'm not feeling it. I don't I want religion, but I don't want that much religion. I don't want to be so he's bored, he's stale, he wants us to live too perfect. He wants us to do too much, and I can't do it. He treats me like a child. We have all these things going on in this world today. People do not want to live right. And the sad thing is, I'm talking about people who've been knowing God for over 20 years. You don't hear me. And we wonder why these children don't have no fear of God. We wonder why these kids are doing whatever they want to do in that world. You know, and you know, just like Pharaoh and just like uh, when, when they prosecuted Jesus, they took him to hell. They took him to Pontius Pilate. You don't hear me? And one of them, even both of them probably said, well, this blood is not on my hands. They gave it to the people. They gave it to the people. This blood is not on. The blood is on your hands. If you know somebody is sinning, you tell them what you're doing is a sin. And this is what you need to do. You need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you shall uh, get the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit give utterance. You have to tell people who you know, and when God gives you an opportunity to speak to people, you don't hear that about the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't go and say, oh, I'm going to a party. I'm going to a party, and you're sitting there, you're drinking water. You see, the devil is a devil of standard deviation. I'm at church being churchy and all that stuff when church going along, but when I go to the party, I'm acting out. I'm, I'm dancing better than everybody at the party. You don't hear me. 
I'm doing all kind of twists, all kind of bends. I'm doing a 360 spin, everything. I'm hitting the beat at every beat. I'm drinking all the whiskey wine. I'm even dancing with two women at a time. You don't hear me? Somebody don't like me today. Somebody don't like what I'm saying today. You know it's true. The Bible often say we are not promised. We are not promised tomorrow. What the third verse said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I'm mourning because somebody got hurt. I'm mourning because somebody died. I'm mourning because I want my life right with God. I'm crying because his spirit hit me. You don't hear me? Blessed. Are they that mourn? For they shall be comforted. They're going to be comforted in his name. You can't be in the place of standard deviation because the devil is a person, is a spirit of standard deviation. He deviates from everything that the God want of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Showing compassion, comfort, and empathy. The fifth one, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. How many people you know have so much money because they invest in, in, in the earth? They invest in stocks and bond to help people. And they blew up and became billionaires. Let me go back again. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Bill Gates invented Microsoft. And without Microsoft, you wouldn't have PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 because the graphics and the icons and the windows were not there. The icons to project video type things. The icons to protect an individual running or singing or dancing or whatnot. Without Microsoft, without uh, Bill Gates' invention, we would have never had the icons to, 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 to play a football game on, on PlayStation. But you don't understand me. You needed his brain and his mind. That's something that he that that he was meek enough to put into the world, and he inherited. He and not a man's billions and billions of dollars because he did that thing. They even tried to argue with Bill Gates and said that we made PlayStation Four. You didn't make it. He said without Microsoft and without the icons and all the stuff, you would have never been able to make PlayStation Four, which is true. And then Bill Gates came back and proved this theory by making Xbox. You don't hear me? Xbox is Bill Gates, baby. You don't hear me? And then there came a man who started reading books and started uh, doing uh, stuff on Amazon. And he became a billionaire. Then they had a guy doing stuff on Facebook, having people communicate, having people see people talk. You could be on Facebook and you could be Facebook Live and he's a billionaire. You don't hear me? Uh, blessed are the meek, <laughs> for they shall inherit the earth. <laughs> they inherit the earth. They're billions and billions of dollars. Are uh, you meek today? It, it's shoot. They say blessed are, uh, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I believe and trust in God. I pray to God. I have faith in God. God has healed. God has blessed me. God has given me strength. You don't hear me? God has made me whole. My life is filled. My life is filled with joy. My life is filled with happiness. My life is filled with content. When I'm lonely and not feeling good, you don't hear me? I feel his presence in me. I feel his healing power healing me every time I do something. And when my body is hurting and it's aching, he gives me wisdom on what to do and how to do it, where to go and where to go and how to go. I let go and let God. I let go and let God in my life. I don't take the word of a devil telling me to deviate from God's word. Because that's what the devil does. Just because you have a lot of money, uh, just because you're rich, uh, just because you have a lot of wealth in this world, that don't mean what you say is true. That don't mean you could get up here and say anything you want. You got to be in communion with God. 
You got to go by his word. You got to wait on him and not on yourself. Because when you're waiting on yourself, now you let the devil be a control of you. You let the devil deviate from your life. Do you know people are losing blessings because they're gone with the deviation of the devil? They say, well, what about all these music singers, these rappers? What about them? They're making all this money. They're driving in Lamborghinis and they're driving all these fancy cars. I got a witness for you about these rich rappers, these rich singers and all this. Everywhere you go, every time you see a rapper or whatnot, haven't you, haven't you noticed? They either going to jail or dying. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to jail. I don't know about you. I don't want to die right now because I, God is not finished with me. I don't want to be in that number. You know the government said they're going to take prayer out of school. Uh, don't deviate. Uh, don't deviate. God said prayer without cease. Uh, don't deviate. Uh, don't deviate. Uh, the devil, they want their wives to lie to their husbands. Uh, you don't hear me? The devil want the wives to lie to the husband. In my book, in the word, the Bible said every liar will have a part in the lake of fire. You don't hear me? And husbands out there, they lying to their wives. They're going on trips. They're taking long trips. And they're finding a secretary. They're finding a, 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 if you're assistant, you hear me? And they're doing assistant things that they shouldn't be doing. But the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The Bible said, the Bible said, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's a sin. Don't do it. People might want to ride over. It's okay to have somebody on the side. I'm telling you, we living for Christ. I'm telling you, we living under his grace and mercy. Not our grace and mercy. Not the government grace and mercy. We living under the grace and mercy of Jesus. And then we going to live under his grace and mercy. We got to do what thus said the word of God. We can't deviate from the scripture. We can't put something else in there. The word said, if not, don't let no man change my gospel. You don't hear me. Don't let nobody put something in there that don't supposed to be in there. Yeah. The word of God said that anybody will tell you anything else uh, than what I give you. Uh, let him be a curse. Uh, you find rappers. Uh, they say all kind of things. Uh, they rap all kind of things. And, and then they rap to their death. Lord, pray for them. Lord, we want them healed. We don't want no more death. Uh, you have all these rich people. Uh, just because they got a uh, status of 200 million or 300 million, they think they can live any kind of way they want. Uh, but they get exposed. Uh, they get embarrassed. And, and some of them lose a lot. You don't hear me? Uh, you got to live right for God. Uh, you got to, when the word said do this, uh, that means do this. Uh, the word said don't sin. The word don't say sin. Uh, what happened? Uh, what happened uh, in the time of Solomon and Gomorrah? Uh, he said uh, those people better get right. Uh, he said uh, those people better repent. Uh, he said uh, can you find me ten? Uh, he couldn't find ten. He put the number down. Well can you find nine? Uh, he couldn't find nine. The number went all but nobody, nowhere, wanted to repent. They wanted to live in their lust. They wanted to live in their unnatural affection. You don't hear me? Not natural affection, unnatural affection. People trying to say you could get married with a man and a man and a woman and a woman. And the Lord said no. The devil is trying to deviate from God. The devil wants you to do what you want to do. The devil wants you to live the way you want to live. He don't want you to do right. God just wants you to live. Don't have no 
disease in your body want you to have a right mind. You don't understand me. When you do things not that nature not meant for you to do, all kind of diseases come up. You get all kind of stuff wrong with you. Your body not acting right. Now you got to take a pill so your body, and God never meant us to take all these pills for this, that, and the other. He want us to live right. He don't want us to be destructive. He don't want us to live in H-E-L-L. -L. He want us to live in the heavenly before we even get to heaven. God want us to have peace. He want us to have peace. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. I want the Lord. I need the Lord. Jesus in my mind. Jesus in my soul. And Jesus in my heart. Well, how in the world you get all these people having all these thoughts telling you what you do? How could a married woman talk to a single woman, a single woman telling the married woman what to do? And you wonder why things don't work out. I, you don't hear me? How can you have a group meeting about your marriage? You should never have a group meeting about your marriage. Well, I'm not going to listen to what my husband saying. I'm going to listen to what my friends say. And that single person, they're single for a reason. And if you keep listening to that single person, you're going to be single too. You don't hear me? God want us to live righteous. He want us to be blessed. And we can't be blessed if we don't live righteous. We can't listen to the wiles of the world. Everything the world tell you is not going to be right. The world wants you to destroy your body. God don't want you to destroy your body. God wants you to let go and listen to his word. Don't deviate from the word of God. And we could get up here, come to church, go to work, go to school, and we live our lives the same every day. Nothing didn't happen to me. Now I must be okay. No, you're not okay. Don't wait till it's too late. Some people in this world have waited. Until it was too late and they let that deviation of the devil consume them. You got to practice living right. You got to practice doing right. You got to practice being right. I don't wait till Sunday to start praying and believing and trusting in God. I'll be praying while I'm working. I'll be asking the Lord to give me strength as I go. I'll be listening to the music, gospel music and whatnot just so I can get ready. You got to have a lifestyle and, and love the lifestyle. Live for the Lord Jesus Christ and not living for the devil. The devil will deviate you out of heaven. Don't let the devil deviate you out of heaven. Heaven is meant for everybody. If you still living in this world, if you still breathing, if you still walking around, you have a chance to repent of your sins. I urge you repent of your sins now. You let go. You let go. And let God in your life. You turn from your sins. That means make a bow face. Don't do those sins no more. Don't do them no more. And when you praying and asking the Lord to heal you, you believe and trust in that. And you keep praying and believe and trust in God that he's going to heal. He will. He said, if, if two or more gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. That's the true thing. He can heal your body. He can heal your mind. Right now, our minds need to be healed more than ever because people are confused. But there's no need to be confused. The word is plain and simple. You simply have to repent of your sins. You simply have to make a bow face on sin. You read that word. You pray. You believe in God. And God will deliver you. He will heal you. He will be there for you. He'll be there for you evermore. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But the devil, on the other hand, he's going to leave you every chance he gets. Oh, the devil got me. Yeah, he got you all right. The second you get in that street, he's not going to tell you nothing. He's going to tell a person to call, speed up. He's going to tell the person to call speed up. That's what the devil, he's going to deviate. He's trying to deviate. You, you're supposed to live, you're supposed to live to 70, 80. Do you know?
know they got people who died at the age of 20 that was that was that had the opportunity to live longer, but they didn't because the way they live their life, the environment they live in. That's a choice you made. And people always use the excuse to well, God know what's gonna happen. I might as well have as much fun as that. And you're gonna have your fun right into the mind of the devil, just like Eve when she listened to the serpent, when the serpent told her she need to eat of the forbidden fruit. Now, I'm not eating of the forbidden fruit. I'm going to live every day, every day for God, and I'm going to concentrate on him. Forget about yourself and concentrate on him. Forget about yourself and concentrate on him. We have come into this place to magnify the Lord and worship him. We have come into this place, magnify the Lord and worship Him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, worship Him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have to, every day you live, you should come. To worship the Lord every day you live. You should come to magnify Him. He's giving you life. He's giving you another chance to live. Let's do it right this time. We have come into this house, gathered in His name, and worship Him. Jesus, we have come into this place, gathered in his name, and worship him. Thank you, Jesus. We have come into Thank you, Jesus. Come into this house. We're gathered in his name. We're going to worship you, Jesus. We thank you for allowing us to live another day. Allowing us to breathe. Allowing us to talk. Allowing us to worship your name, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you so much, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We're going to come into this house. We're going to come in this house. Gathered in his name. We're gathered in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus. We're not believing in Buddha. We're not believing in Harry Krishna. We're not even believing in the devil's deviation. We're going to follow his word. We're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. to this house Jesus Jesus Christ Jesus Christ our Lord thank you Jesus worship to live in God. Let go right now, today. Let go. Have Jesus on your mind. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 